Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Sarah Taisir. I'm a pediatrics and neonatology specialist and healthcare consultant on MedSynapse Medical Platform. Today, I'm very pleased to have Dr. Uh, Ali Abdel Fattah uh, with us on our podcast. Dr. Ali is a physician, researcher, and a global health advocate. Welcome, Dr. Ali. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah. And it's my pleasure uh, being with you today. Uh, this is my first uh, ever podcast. Uh, Uh, podcast uh, episode with MedSynapse and I'm really excited for it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It won't be the last, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, so, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to know more about your medical background before we start our interesting topic. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, so I am a GP doctor and I'm currently working with uh, men's and healthcare services as patient care consultant and a GP as well. Uh, I graduated from Dubai Medical College 2019. And uh, after that, uh, as you know, the COVID pandemic hit by the end of 2019. So I started uh, serving in, in COVID field hospitals all over UAE. I participated in the clinical researches that we conducted in that time uh, on the early phases of uh, the COVID uh, vaccine. Uh, I also served as uh, an investigator and researcher at that time, as well as uh, a GP in the ICU units and uh, the field hospitals, uh, mainly in the Emirate of uh, Abu Dhabi. Okay. Uh, As an undergraduate a student, I traveled several countries uh, to gain, you know, clinical exposure, especially in the surgical field. This is my area of uh, passion, and I'm looking forward uh, to being a, a general surgeon in the future. Uh, I am also a health advocate, uh, especially when it comes to breast cancer and migraine as well. Uh, my very first uh, project was in India. the rural areas in South uh, India to raise awareness about uh, breast cancer, to teach uh, the young girls how to do the breast cell uh, examinations, mm -hmm. and to raise funds uh, for then NGOs that support the cruise. Uh, right now, I'm working on a project related to migraine. We support migraine patients. Uh, we give them the medical education that they need. We support them when it comes to uh, also medication uh, supply and access to treatment. It's a very challenging disease, uh, actually. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, I think that there is a huge uh, misconception uh, about migraine. People only think it's just a headache or a severe form of headache, when in fact it's not just a headache. It affects your whole body, affects your productivity, yeah. your lifestyle, affects your family and your loved ones. And it's a cause of disability, actually. Yes, and this and is what we're going to talk about uh, right exactly. now. Uh, exactly. So, Dr. Ali, today we're going to talk about migraine. Uh, we're going to uh, deep uh, dig in this uh, subject and we, um, we're going to talk about the evolution of migraine treatments from ancient remedies to uh, the new and modern science. So yes. first of all, first question I have for you is what were some of the earliest recorded treatments uh, for migraines in e ancient civilizations in Egypt, Rome and Greece? Yeah, actually, this is a very interesting question and it really caught my attention while uh, reading on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, because uh, in ancient times, people, uh, old civilizations used to think that migraine are linked to some supernatural uh, activity, uh, ghosts and uh, spiritual uh -huh. reasons were there behind migraine. Uh, yeah. Take, for example, the Egyptians, uh, they used to um, First of all, they used to treat migraine with uh, various uh, herbs, such as uh, the willow bark. Uh, it contains salicylates uh, compounds, okay. and this is what we actually find nowadays in in aspirin. Yeah. Also, they also implemented some techniques related to placing a clay crocodile uh, on the head. Uh, Yes, it's, it's, it's a spiritual <laughs> approach to yeah. healing. Uh, so actually, uh, ancient Egyptians used uh, the crocodile uh, as simple in order to scare uh, the ghosts and the supernatural uh, entities. And they used to uh, to wrap it around uh, the head of a patient okay. with, uh, with a band. Yes, and put some kind of herbs inside uh, the open mouth of that clay uh, crocodile. Yeah. And uh, they believed actually it it, it, it actually worked. Surprisingly, it uh, it worked. Okay. Of course, uh, the herbs that they put inside the clay crocodile played uh, an important role yeah. in relieving the migraine pain. Also applying tension and pressure uh, on the head. Uh, 
uh, now is explained uh, by causing vasoconstriction of those yeah. uh, vessels. As we know, what happens in migraine has a vascular component to it, which involves the vasodilatation, and it's one of uh, it's one of the reasons why we experience yeah. uh, the headache migraine exactly. so the tension and pressure that was put on the patient head using the band and the crocodile uh, the clay crocodile was believed to to compress the blood vessels and cause vasoconstriction and antagonize the vasodilation okay. uh, that happens in the blood uh, vessels okay. Okay. so when it comes to greek people uh, we all know about hippocrates he okay. documented uh, it was documented that he used blood letting and herbal infusion i think bloodletting is nowadays maybe similar to cupping yeah. and it's actually yeah uh, I, I i have seen it uh with my own eyes i have heard it from migraine patients that i'm following up with that they still go for cupping nowadays to relieve their pain some okay. of them have even stopped their uh, medications prescribed by the doctor <laughs> because they believe <laughs> cupping is, is more effective so it works for uh, yeah. some uh, some patients so uh however uh the room uh, they saw the influence of uh, galene mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, galene has uh, a theory. He proposed the theory of uh, body humors yeah. and described some purgatives and dietary changes to manage headache pain. Mm -hmm. And it worked at that time. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, nowadays, uh, actually, when you speak about the treatment of migraine, it's not only uh, one kind of approach, it's mm -hmm. actually requires holistic approach it yeah. has to involve the dietary uh, changes changes using the conservative uh, methods or the natural uh, remedies for migraine as well as medication yeah. modifying lifestyles yeah. so if you look at migraine treatment nowadays it's actually a collective of all of those uh, approaches from all uh, the ancient civilizations including the modern uh, advancement in migraine uh, medication so yeah. it's not only one system or one medication it's actually a collective of approaches mm -hmm. and it actually works with a lot of patients okay and what were the key discoveries and advancement in migraine research during uh, the 19th and 20th centuries yes actually the 19th and 20th uh, centuries were very important because they marked uh, the transition from the mystical explanations mm -hmm. Uh, migraine to a more uh, medical and scientific uh, understanding. Okay. understanding. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, uh, a very well-known neurologist at the time, his name is Sir William uh, Gowers. He mm -hmm. began defining uh, migraines as neurological disorder rather than only being uh, a vascular disorder. Yeah. Uh, the 20th century was also significant because uh, it has brought significant uh, uh, advancements to the field, including mm -hmm. Dr. Harold Wolf's researches that link migraine pain to the dilatation and constriction of the blood vessels, as we mentioned uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. Also, the, uh, in 19, uh, 1920s, uh, uh, of course, it, uh, it witnessed the, the birth of ergotamines and tryptans in the 1990s, okay. especially the very well-known sumatriptan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these two discoveries represented, of course, major uh, breakthroughs in the acute uh, treatment of uh, migraine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the nineteenth, uh, the nineteenth century as well, uh, saw the recognition of migraine as a complex uh, neurological disorder involving several neurotransmitters uh, such as uh, serotonin. Okay. So I think these uh, two eras were very important. A lot of discoveries, yes, a lot of recognition, a lot of uh, research, think, yeah. a lot of uh, misunderstandings being uh, clarified. Yes. Uh, and, yeah, and being uh, approved by the society and the scientific community at that time. Yes, absolutely right. And what are the different classes of medications currently used to treat migraines and how do they exactly work? So uh, when it comes to migraine treatments and medication, they are mainly categorized and classified into uh, either the acute or abortive uh, treatment mm -hmm. or the preventive or prophylactic. Uh, mm -hmm. treatment. Okay. For example, the acute treatments involve uh, tryptans, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, mm -hmm. and GPANs. Okay. Uh, uh, tryptans are known for uh, targeting the serotonin receptors mm -hmm. uh, and thus they reduce inflammation and constrict uh, blood vessels. Okay. NSAIDs, as we all know, they reduce pain by inhibiting the production of prostaglandins. Yeah. 
and GPANs are CGRP or cal uh, calcium uh, gene related peptide receptor antagonists. They work uh, to block the protein, uh, which is the CGRP, uh, and it was found to be linked to migraine pain uh, pathways. I was so, going to ask you about the CGRP uh, specifically, how did they contribute in the treatment of migraine? Exactly, exactly. So um, I think the, the, the discovery of uh, the CTRB theory is relatively new to the mm -hmm. other uh, medications and other uh, causes of yeah. migraine. Mm -hmm. So we have a protein in our body called uh, uh, the CGRP, uh, calcium gene related peptide. And of course, each substance in our body has its own and specific receptors that mm -hmm. it binds to and through which exerts an action. Yeah. So it was found in a huge number or majority of migraine patients that the CGRP was found to be the culprit in causing uh, the pain. Mm -hmm. So as a result of this discovery, we uh, have uh, we have I mean seen the birth of several medications that yeah. either work on the CGRP substance itself mm -hmm. to block it from binding to its receptors and thus preventing the development of pain, or maybe binding to the receptor itself mm -hmm. to prevent CGRP from binding to the receptor and thus we block uh, the pain button. So, of the drugs that work on the CGRP uh, uh, receptor and antagonize the action of the CGRP substance are the GPANs, which are part of the acute or abortive uh, treatment yeah. uh, of migraine. However, we have other classes of medication mm -hmm. uh, that also work on the CGRP uh, or CGRP receptor pathway, okay. uh, and they are considered a prophylactic or preventive treatment, and we will speak about it. Them. Yes, so so I would like to know about this, um, the preventive uh, medications. What are the pros and cons of taking these medications? Exactly. When it comes to preventive treatments, it has several classes. Let us talk about the CGRP inhibitors first. Yeah, sure. Uh, Yes, so the CGRP inhibitors are uh, what's known as uh, monoclonal uh, antibodies and they block either the CGRP substance itself, which is a protein or a peptide, yeah. or block the receptor to prevent uh, the migraine attacks by preventing uh, the pain pathway initiated by uh, the CGRP. Okay. Um, of the CGRP inhibitors, we have a very uh, famous uh, drug nowadays, it's called the Viapti or Eptinizumab. It's also a monoclonal antibody. It's given as IV infusion in the hospital setting only over 30 minutes. It's actually very effective mm -hmm. and it has a very fast onset of action in comparison to the other anti-CGRPs available such as Imgality or uh, Imovic. Mm -hmm. uh, Imgality or Imovic are two injectable forms of anti-CGRPs as well they are given subcutaneously and um, by subcutaneously it can either uh, be given in the abdomen in the thigh region yeah. uh yeah wherever we have a good amount of uh fat in our body yeah. where the medication can be administered subcutaneously mm -hmm. they are self-administrable uh, at home Okay. Uh, however, of the anti-CGRPs, Viapti was found to be the safest mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to the other uh, anti-CGRPs and it's the only approved um, migraine treatment given through the IV form. Okay. So, other than the CGRP inhibitors, when it comes to preventive or prophylactic treatment, we have the beta blockers, we have antidepressants, yeah. anticonvulsants mm -hmm. as well. Beta blockers, we all know of uh, we, have, we have all heard about propranolol and metoprolol. Right. So it was found to reduce the frequency and severity of migraine, uh, 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 frequency and severity of migraine attacks by yeah. inhibiting certain uh, neurotransmitter effects. When it comes to uh, antidepressants uh, such as amitriptyline, mm -hmm. it also modulates the serotonin and norepinephrine levels and anticonvulsants as well, such as topiramate and valproate, and they work by stabilizing the nerve activities in, in our body. Okay. So uh, the most uh, uh, or the most recent or the newest kind of treatment among all of these are the CGRB mm -hmm. uh, inhibitors. They are very safe in comparison to the other yeah, uh, medications such as the anticonvulsants or antidepressants. Yes. They are very effective and they do have long lasting effects. Okay. And what do you think about uh, not medications, but the 
the fact that some people who experience migraine, uh, doctors advise them with uh, staying in a dark room, uh, no loud voice, no um, light, no straight light uh, or direct light. Uh, is that help actually help in uh, reducing the migraine? Yes, attacks? yes, yes. Actually, uh, a part of treating uh, migraine uh, is actually to avoid triggers. So, in a lot of migraine okay. patients, uh, high light intensities or light in general was mm-hmm. found to be uh, either a trigger. It triggers migraine attacks from zero, from okay. the state of having no pain. Or it can worsen the severity, uh, worsen the pain that you have if you are currently experiencing a migraine attacks. Mm-hmm. So definitely avoiding the direct exposure to light and staying in a room with dim light or dark mm-hmm. room uh, definitely helps the patients to actually to to stop the progress of the pain. Yeah. And sometimes patients find actually relief from a migraine attack yeah. that is going on when they actually uh, switch to uh, a dark room or a lower intensity of light in general. And what about uh, coffee? Do you think that caffeine uh, helps in reducing these attacks? Yes, actually, uh, coffee, uh, caffeine in general yeah. is really helpful in, 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 in migraine patients. Mm-hmm. However, uh, uh, increasing the intake of coffee during the day yeah. was found to cause the opposite, which means okay. it can induce or trigger migraine uh, migraine attacks. To, so okay. consuming uh, caffeine in moderate uh, amounts yeah. uh, with not uh, exceeding, uh, exceeding the, for example, two cups of uh, caffeine uh, mm-hmm. per day or over intake of, of caffeine okay. is actually found to be effective. In fact, caffeine is present as a component of some of the painkillers like Panadol migraine, for example, yeah. or Panadol extra. There is a percentage of caffeine in those painkillers and it actually works for some patients. Okay. And regarding the future directions, what are the most promising areas of migraine research today? Yeah, so uh, uh, there are actually a lot of research uh, going on uh, about a very interesting uh, topics and aspects related to migraine treatment, with, which is the genetic and molecular underpinnings of uh, migraine. Okay. Actually, uh, the active research uh, going on in, in those areas will help us in the future uh, tailor targeted treatments that is special or specific to each and every uh, each and every patient mm-hmm. also nowadays we do have the new modulation uh, device mm-hmm. and they are non-invasive they work by stimulating the vagus nerve and other pathways uh, that are being explored as alternatives to the uh, to pharmacotherapy in general okay so uh, i think also there is a lot of research on the um, personalized um, medicine, it will help us tailor the treatments to each and every individual's genetic and biological uh, profile. And this will in return uh, increase the efficacy uh, and minimize the side effects that patients experience from experimenting and uh, jumping from one medication to another. And one final question for you, doctor. Uh, What can we expect in terms of new and innovative migraine treatments in the next decade? Yes, I believe in the coming decade, we may see more sophisticated uh, CDRP targeted uh, therapies and next generation Japan's with mm-hmm. uh, longer lasting uh, effects. Uh, also, the neuromodulation technology is expected to evolve, offering more accessible and user friendly and effective non pharmacological uh, options. Also, I think uh, as we have all witnessed that uh, uh, AI is being used yeah. and implemented in several aspects of our life, including the medical uh, field. So I believe there will be advancements in AI and wearable uh, technologies, and they will enable a real-time migraine monitoring and predictive analytics to also prevent attacks before they even uh, begin. That's and that. also, wow. yes, uh, and also uh, ongoing research into the several neurotransmitters in our body and the role of the different brain networks could unlock new molecular uh, targets and leading to the discovery of more effective drugs with hopefully uh, fewer side effects and happier patients in the future. Thank you so much, Dr. Ale. It was a very interesting topic. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah. It was my pleasure uh, to be with you today. And uh, we should 
keep spreading awareness about uh, migraine and uh, we should keep our patients updated about the most recent advancements in migraine. As you know, the chronic nature of migraine can lead to patients feeling uh, hopeless and yes. maybe stopping seeking medical help and tolerating very bad uh, or very high uh, severity of pains. Yeah. And it can take the patients into uh, a cycle of uh, hopelessness and not see seeking medical help, yes. which is what we want to avoid. We want the patients to actively seek treatment and we want the doctors and healthcare providers as well to keep their patients updated about uh, any uh, new treatment and keeping them involved in their treatment uh, plan and making choices uh, for themselves and of course keeping those uh, patients uh under our eyes with close monitoring of their uh, symptoms or with their uh, advancements yeah. and we want everyone to uh, to receive the medical care that they deserve and of course equal access uh, of medications yes, to all patients around the globe Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sai. Have Thank a great you so day. Much. Thank you. you too.